what we're gonna do here first, I'm gonna do two shots. I am going to, in the first one, take the club back and set the club with my hands like we talk about to the takeaway. And then from there, I'm gonna use body rotational speed. So I'm gonna hold the angle and just turn and see how far I hit the golf ball. Okay, second shot, I am going to take the club back the same way, set to the takeaway. But now when I come through, I'm not gonna use the body, I'm going to just use my hands. So that was a pretty clear difference in distance there. So when we look at the ball flight data, the carry distance and total distance. On the first one, I carried the ball 121 yards and it went to 132. The second one, 136 carry, went a total of 149. So it proves that the hands and arms are where the speed is really coming from. So, and also understand that the speed comes from, a, or at a certain point in the swing, which is from pre-impact when the club is parallel to the ground in the downswing, to post impact when it's parallel to the ground in the follow through. So to understand why the hands are so much more of a speed accumulator than the body, it's because of how we control the handle. So we've talked about in our videos that we are basically pushing down with our palms to start the takeaway and pointing down with the fingers until we get to that takeaway point. So we did that the same way in both videos. But the difference was, instead of me holding the angle, like keeping, we'll say, the uh, trail pointer finger pointing back and just pushing with the palms and kind of hanging onto the claws, it doesn't really create as much speed as if I set the club back, pushing, pointing down the same way. But now from here, if I allow the trail arm to go from bent to straight, keeping the trail wrist cupped and push down, We'll, we'll talk about, we've talked about that circle and the takeaway just outside the trail foot. Now think of that circle just outside the lead foot and the follow through to post impact. So I set it back with the end of the circle here. And now I'm gonna take that trail arm going from bent to straight, trying to fire it into that second circle. So all the energy is again, created and released from here to here. And that's how we create this speed because it's a gear effect. It's like I've wound the lever back to a quarter. Now I'm gonna just Snap it back down. Now if I take it back here like we proved with the body, if I turn, see the handle's moving too far forward and the club head's not gonna be able to catch up. So it's more of this. So the handle speed is basically reduced, which affects the club head speed, where if I set the club to the takeaway, get to that pre-impact, trail arm goes from bent to straight. Now if I stop the button, that club head is catapulted basically to our next circle, which is our post-impact circle, which is just outside the lead foot. So it's like we have two circles, we're trying to push down and then just push right back down basically and trying to keep like the handle of the club in a sense just outside the hips basically from parallel to parallel to the ground. We don't want to go like here and then try to turn because of course that's going to have a bad result. We want to make sure that we get here and then snap it down the line. So again, understanding that we're trying to move the handle and the club head fast, we're not trying to move our body fast in a sense. And understanding that if the club was an extension of your body and I go to here, how fast can I do that, right? Opposed to if I take the club here and go like that, how fast is the club gonna move? Much faster. So just understand really how to use the golf club properly, when does that speed really come into play, and understand that the hands will always win the race when it comes to hand speed versus body speed.